Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Today we're with the Imam al-Hajjawi in the text Zad al-Mustaqna' in the book of Psalm, in the book of fasting. And we've reached the part with the author, he says, Babu ma yufsidu Psalm wa yujibu al-kafara. The chapter speaking about that which spoils the fast and necessitates that the, an expiation is made for some matters. So he's going to discuss the matters which break the fast and then there's going to be some discussion maybe this week or next week pertaining to uh, kafara which is expiation that needs to be paid for having spoiled the fast in a certain way. So Sheikh Mansur, one of the explainers, explainers of this text, he says, Asom yurad biha al mufattarat and he's speaking about the things which spoil the fast. Fa'ida, a'lam anna asul mufattarat thalatha. A benefit to know, Sheikh Mansur says, is that the things which break the fast are three. Three fundamental things, and from them others are added. The first of them is al akal, eating. The second is al shurb, drinking. The third is al jima', a sexual intercourse with one's wife. وَمَا يُلْحَقُوا بِهَا And that which is connected to any of these matters. لِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى Due to the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah فَالْآنَ بَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَبَتَاوُوا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا Now it's permitted for you, Allah is saying, to have relationships with your wife, wives, and to eat and to drink. So it means that before that time, before the time of sunset, then these things were impermissible and they would break the fast. The author, he said, Man akala aw shariba. Whoever eats or drinks, this is going to break the fast. Al awwal wa thani min mufattarat al akka wa shurb. Dalla lahu al kitab wa sunna wal ijma. So Sheikh Mansur says that the evidence for these things, eating and drinking, breaking the fast, is from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and is also from the ijma', from the consensus of the Muslim jurists. فَمِنَ kitab, So from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the verse which I just read, فَالْآنَ بَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَبَتَغُوا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ So now go ahead and have relationships with your wives, and seek that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed for you. وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا And eat and drink. حَتَّى يَتَّبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْتُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْتِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ And eat and drink until it's made clear to you that the dawn has now come upon you. And from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, يَتْرُكُ طَعَامُهُ وَشَرَابُهُ وَشَهْوَتُهُ مِنْ أَجْلِ in the hadith Qudsi in Bukhari Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, uh, using the words of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that the slave, he leaves off his eating, and he leaves off his drinking, and he leaves, leaves off his desires, meaning relationships, sexual relationships, and that which is similar to it, for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's sake. So any of these things which are done would break the fast. Shaykh Mansur says, وَيَدْقُلُ فِي الْأَكْلِ وَالشُّبْ ما في معناهما مما يقوم مقامهما and enters into the categories of eating and drinking that which also has the same understanding and which takes the place of eating and drinking مما يغذي البدن from that which can nourish the body ويدخل في الجوف ويدخل في الجوف and enters into the جوف this word jawf is going to come up a few times and you need to understand what the Hanbali scholars mean by this. There's a variety of difference of opinions amongst the fuqaha, the jurists, as to what the word jawf means. And due to this, you find a variety of opinions on the fiqh issues pertaining to what breaks the uh, fasting and what doesn't break the fast. So with the Hanbali scholars in general, the jawf is anything from the throat down to the stomach and the intestines in that area, and also the dimagh. Also, if something goes up in taste or in substance to the area of the skull, the area where the mind and the brain is. This is al-jawf, anything which enters the, through, passing through the throat and goes down to the stomach, okay? And also anything which uh, is in the dimagh area, the area of the skull and the brain. So as Sheikh Mansur was saying, uh, so there's things which take the place of uh, eating and drinking, if they are nourishing 
ويدخل في الجوف and they enter into the body the جوف كالإبر المغذية ونحوها like for example somebody is on an intravene somebody is on uh, in the hospital and they are being fed through tubes or something of that nature so they are receiving nourishment but not by way of their mouth etc and also if there's a type of injection that is being given to them and it contains nourishment that the body can be sustained on uh, Sheikh Fahd al-Mutiri rahimahullah ta'ala uh, hafizahullah ta'ala in his explanation of Zad al-Mustaqna he said the madhab as with the other three schools of thought they do not differentiate between eating and drinking which is beneficial or non-beneficial nor do they differentiate between eating and drinking which is harmful or not harmful rather it's just a general prohibition anything which goes in passing the mouth down the throat into the stomach is considered as, as eating and drinking therefore even if what one swallows a piece of paper this is considered eating and drinking in the madhab and in the four schools of thought and it's considered to have broken your fast Sheikh uh, Abdul Salam al-Shawair Hafidullah Ta'ala in his explanation he mentions the linguistic definition of what is eating and drinking he said al-murad bil akil fi lisan al-arab that the intent of eating in the language of the Arabs أي كل شيء يدخل إلى الجوف الآدمي من طريق الفم anything which enters into the jawf and we explain the jawf uh, anything which enters into the jawf of the sons of Adam through the mouth okay فإنه يسمى أكلا for verily that would be considered to be أكلا that would be considered to be eating no matter what it is سواء كان مغذيا أو غير مغذيا whether that is nourishing or not nourishing هذا في لسان العرب يسمونه أكلا this in the لسان of the Arab and the Arabic language is considered eating طيب ابن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى uh, one of the Imams of the Madhab he held a different opinion he said it's only that which nourishes only that which is beneficial to the body and from the evidences that he mentions in his discussions he said he said that verily the book and the Sunnah of the Prophet I mean the Quran and the Sunnah only uh, forbade that eating which is um, normal eating which is eating which is understood uh, by customary norms والحكم إنما يعلق بشيء المعتاد لا بشيء النادر. and very rulings are given to that which is customarily the norm, not to that which is the exception and uh, not often found. وما سواه يبقى على الأصل. and other than that is kept upon the original foundation in terms of rulings. so Ibn Taymiyyah is saying that what is understood to be eating and drinking, which most human beings on the face of the earth understand, is that which nourishes the body. That is where the ruling is given. So if something passes your mouth, which nourishes the body, then the ruling is given as you having broken the fast. And also he says, insan law bala ariqahu lam bil ijma. That a person, if he was to swallow his saliva, he swallows the saliva, therefore it passes his mouth down into the stomach, then by consensus, this doesn't break the fast. كَذَلِكَ بَلَعَ مَا لَا يَنْفَعْ لَا يُفْتِرْ So he says, therefore, likewise, if a person swallows that which doesn't benefit him, then of course it doesn't break his fast. وَبَلْعُ الرِّيكَ لَا يَنْفَعْ لَا يَدْفَعَ الْجُوعْ وَلَا الْأَطَشْ So swallowing the saliva doesn't keep at bay uh, hunger, nor does it keep at bay, uh, nor does it quench your thirst. So Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala is saying that it's only those things which nourish your body. And also he mentioned at the last point, and the ma'na al-maqsood min al-akil wa shub al-taghdiyya that what is intended by eating and drinking is nourishment. Wa taghdiyya tu mun'adimatun fi hadi surah and eating and drinking is not found present if it's like swallowing a paper or a stone or anything of that nature. Nourishment is not there in these situations. So again, the madhab doesn't the madhab and the madhahib in general, the four schools of thought, they don't differentiate between that which is beneficial or not beneficial or that which is harmful or not harmful. So even if a piece of paper passes your throat down into your stomach, then you're considered to have broken your fast. But we said that Ibn Taymiyyah Taala, disagreed with this opinion due to the points that I mentioned. The author, he says, another thing which breaks the fast, Okay? Okay? 
Sa'ud is that which is passed through the nose and it reaches the jawf, it reaches the throat and beyond from the nose. فَلَوْ أَنَّهُ وَصْلَوْ شَيْءٍ فَلَوْ أَنَّهُ وَصْلَ شَيْءٍ إِلَى جَوْفِهِ عَنْ تَرِيقِ الْأَنْفِ فَإِنَّهُ يُفْتِرُ بِذَلِكَ So if anything passes through the nose and down into the stomach, then this will break the fast. وَالْأَلَّةُ And what is the reasoning for this? أَنَّ الْأَنْفِ مَنْ فَضْلِ الْجَوْفِ Because the anf, the nose, is a manfad. It's an opening which leads to the internal part of the body, passing the throat and into the stomach. So it reaches to the stomach. And the hadith in Abi Dawood in Tirmidhi of Luqit ibn Subra radiallahu anhu, the Prophet وسلم, said in part of the hadith, وَبَالِغْ فِي الْإِسْتِنْشَاقِ إِلَّا أَن تَكُونَ صائمة. And exaggerate when you do istinshaq in wudu. Istinshaq in wudu is to take, to sniff water into your nose. The Prophet ﷺ was saying exaggerate in doing so unless you are fasting. So it shows that if you are fasting and water passes your nose into your throat, then this will break your wudu. So therefore to pass something intentionally through your nose and therefore it goes down to your throat and to your stomach, then of course this will break your fast. Another thing, the next thing the author he mentions which breaks the fast is he said, Oh or the person does this. Al Ihtiqan. Well Ihtiqan idhalul adwiya and tariq dubr. Ihtiqan ihtaqana is to put a medication through one's what's the polite way? Through one's anus. فَإِذَا أَدْخَلَ دَوَاءً عَنْ تَرِيقِ الدُّبْرِ So if one enters uh, medication to themselves or medication is given to them through their back passage فَإِنَّهُ يُفْتِرُ بِذَلِكَ Then this causes one to break their fast. وَالْعِلَّةُ What is the illa? What is the reasoning? Sheikh Mansour, he says أَنَّهُ إِذَا أَدْخَلَ لِلدُّبْرِ فَقَدْ وَصَلَتْ لِلْجَوْفِ الْإِنسَانِ That if it's put through the back passage food or medication, then it reaches to the jawf, then it reaches to the internal organs, meaning the intestines and the stomach. وَإِذَا وَصَلَ لِلْجَوْفِ شَيْءٌ سَوَاءً تَرِيقِ الْفَمِ أَوْ الْأَنْفِ أَوْ الدُّبْرِ أَوْ غَيْرِهَا And if anything enters into the jawf, whether it's through the uh, back passage, whether it's through the nose, whether it's through the ears, or other than that, فَإِنَّهُ يُفْتِرْ أَشْبَهَ الْأَكْلِ for then it's given the ruling of having broken this person's fast and it's considered to be like eating. Okay, so the madhab says that anything which comes through the back passage will also break your fast because it reaches the jawf of insan. Ibn Taymiyyah ta says, la tufattir. It doesn't. Ibn Taymiyyah held the opposing opinion. He said, لِأَنَّ مَا يَدْخُلْ أَنْ طَرِيقِ الدُّبْرِ لَا يَصِلُ, لا يصل لِلْمَعْدَةِ because it doesn't reach the stomach according to Ibn Taymiyyah and nor is the person nourished by it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best the author Hajjawi rahimahullah ta'ala he said أو اقتحلا بما يصل إلى حلقه أو اقتحلا أو اقتحلا الكهل okay the fourth thing which breaks a person's fast if done الكهل الكهل as you know, is like um, the, the thing which men use or women use uh, to put on their eye lids. It's like an eyeliner of sorts. Um, so Sheikh Mansour, he says that if the person does this kuhl, and there's some type of kuhl which has substance to it, that can be absorbed through the eyes and the taste of that can be found in the throat. So if that happens to be the case that the taste is found in the throat of this kuhl, then it's going to break the fast. وَالْعِلَّةُ And the reason أَنَ الْحَلْقِ أَنَ الْحَلْقِ كَالْجَوْفِ Because the halq is considered to be part of the jawf. وَإِذَا اكْتَحَلَا فَإِنَّهُ يُحِسْ بِطَعْمِهِ فِي حَلْقِهِ And if the person does this kuhl, it can be the case at times that he may find the taste of it in his throat. So that has come to his throat, which has which is forbidden to take from his mouth. So kuhl, you're not allowed to put it straight into your mouth and let it go to your throat. Likewise, if you put it on your eyes, right, in your eyes, and it goes through your eyes down to your throat, you end up 
uh, finding a taste, then this is the given the ruling as though you have eaten it. So it's given the ruling as though a person has eaten it. The next thing the author he mentions, which breaks the fast, he says, Or he enters into his jawf, and again we said the jawf is from the throat down to the stomach and the intestines, and also that which is found uh, in the dimagh of a person. Uh, so any type of entering into the jawf, then this is going to break the fast. Because the reason is that the person has entered into his jawf, that which he was forbidden to do. So therefore it's given the obligatory treatment in ruling as though it breaks the person's fast. Like as though he had actually eaten or drank. And this was the fifth thing. And it is that which enters into the inside of the person. And no. Sheikh Mansur al Saqib he said, and no. That that which enters into the jawf of the person, it doesn't um, escape two scenarios. Either it will go in through the regular and the normal entrances, which is the mouth and the nose, therefore the fast is broken due to that. Or oh, secondly, Secondly, it will go in through other than the normal entrance, which is the mouth and the nose. It will go in through other than the mouth or the nose. And this has a variety of uh, possibilities or situations. For example, he says, For example, a person puts something medication or something of that sort into his ears and then that reaches to his dimag that reaches the feeding of that or the taste of that reaches to his skull area and so that will break uh, his fast and then these things will also break uh, so he said that which you put into the air and also and also for example if a person has an injury an opening in his head and medication is put in there and then the taste or the feeling of that medication ends up in the skull area where the brain is then this is also going to break the fast so the madhab as it has established that these things they will break the fast and the reason is because they have entered into the jawf and that which enters into the jawf will break the fast because it nourishes the body according to the madhab the author he says as an exception he says other than the ahlil is the uh, urinary tract where the urine comes out from from the male organ and so if a person enters some medication or something into uh, that uh, through the male organ, through the penis, uh, where the urine comes out. If he enters medication into that or something else like a needle or something is put into that uh, and it has uh, the taste of medication, then uh, this doesn't break the fast. And the illa is because it doesn't reach the jawf. And as we said that the jawf uh, is the stomach and the intestines and that which is uh, regulating food and nourishment. Rather, it reaches the mathana, the bladder. And the, the regulations of breaking the fast in the Hanbali madhab is with those things which reach the jawf of the person. The author, he said, أو استقاء, or he uh, vomits. Asadis, the sixth thing, al The sixth thing that breaks the person's fast is al 
فإذا استدعى القي فخرج منه بتعمد فإنه يفتر بذلك So if a person causes himself to vomit and does that on purpose then that is going to break the person's fast and from the evidences of this is ما رواه الخمسة that which the five books have narrated question to yourselves what do we mean by the five books when we say أخرجه الخمسة what do we mean when we say that the five books have narrated this who are the five books of hadith طيب, the, khamsa, the khamsa doesn't include Bukhari al-Muslim the khamsa is Abi Dawood Tirmidhi Ibn Majah Al-Nisa'i and then the Musnad of Imam Ahmad this is the khamsa okay uh, so in any case this hadith which I'm going to mention is narrated by the khamsa the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said as narrated by Abu Harayr radiyallahu anhu man istaqa'a amdan falyaqdi whoever causes himself to vomit intentionally then he has to make that fast up meaning the fast is broken and he has to make it up وَمَنْ ذَرَعَهُ الْقَيْءِ فَلَا قَضَاءَ عَلَيْهِ and whoever is overcome by vomiting meaning that he did not cause it himself then there is no qada there is no making up of the fast for him meaning the fast hasn't broken and this hadith was authenticated by Imam al-Nawi rahimahullah ta'ala as well as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and others طيب ابن قدام رحمه الله تعالى as mentioned by Sheikh Fahd al-Mutiri said that there is ijma, there is consensus on this ruling the author may Allah have mercy upon him he said أو استمنى or the person masturbates أو باشرا فأمنى or he has uh, he has non-penetration relationships with his wife and he excretes semen this will also break the fast أو أمذى or he has مذي which comes out due to him uh, having relationships which are not penetrative with his wife أو كرر النذر فأنزل or he continues to look with desire at his wife okay and this causes him to ejaculate semen then these things they will break the fast of the person Sheikh Mansour he says al istimna talab al khuruj al mani bil yad aw ma ashbahu dhalik so istimna masturbation is to uh, seek the excretion of sperm with the hand or something similar to that wal mubashara and the word mubashara here and yubash zawjatahu wa tamassu al bushrata al bashrata bil yad okay is that the person is physically touching his wife or the wife is physically touching uh, the man with the hands or الضم, or they are hugging each other or التقبيل, or they are kissing each other or any other type of interaction which is in the form of arousing uh, each other okay so this is uh, also breaks the fast if the person does this and he ejaculates semen or he ejaculates madhi so as we know that the money is which is known as semen and al madhi I forget the English term for it but it's what comes out at the beginning of sexual intercourse or what comes out due to having uh, arousal thoughts which arouse you so it's sticky but it's not thick like the sperm it's not uh, creamy color and thick like sperm rather it's more clear but it is still sticky and it comes out at the beginning of shahwa Sheikh Mansour he says so this mufattarat khuruj al-mani sawa'an kharaj bi tikrar al-nadhar that uh, the excretion of sperm whether or not that was with repeated staring at that which arouses you or having physical interaction with one's wife but not um, not penetration not penetration or other than that type so in essence if a person has full sexual relationships with his wife and uh, there's excretion of semen this will break the fast if the person doesn't have a full sexual relationship with his wife rather it's just touching or kissing of the, or anything of the like and still he excretes whether it's semen or madhi then also the fast is broken in those cases and the evidence for this is the hadith at qudsi the part that we took before in bukhari and muslim where the prophet ﷺ said from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yatruku ta'amuhu he leaves off his food meaning the fasting person wa sharabuhu and leaves off his drink وَشَهْوَتُهُ and leaves of his shahwa min ajli for my sake when he's fasting so anything 
which is to do with desire and it causes one to excrete semen or it causes one to excrete madhi then this is going to break his fast Sheikh Mansour says وَأَمَّا الْمَذِي فَلِأَنَّهُ مُشْتَرْكٌ مَعَ الْمَنِي فِي كَوْنِهِمَا خَارِجَيْنِ تَخَلَّلْ لَهُمَا أَشَهْوَى He says the reason why madhi is given the ruling of money, of sperm is because they are connected in that they both come out due to a shahwa, due to desire. And whether or not the madhi comes out due to uh, repeatedly staring at that which gives you arousal, or actual physical touching, or masturbating, let me try to just quickly summarize this so again as we said that if the person is touching his wife or he's staring at that which gives him arousal then Sheikh Mansour is saying that regardless if the excretion is semen or the excretion is madhi then the fasting is going to be broken because all of this came out due to the fact that the person was uh, yani staring at that which give, gave him pleasure and therefore it's considered as though he was touching the person however the madhab after reading other scholars works like uh, the explanation by Sheikh Ahmed uh, Amir Bahjat Sheikh Ahmed Bahjat of Zad al Mustaqna and reading the explanations of Sheikh uh, Sami Suqayr, as Suqayr, Sheikh Sami Suqayr, his explanation of Raud al Murbi' uh, and a few others, they tend to differentiate on a matter here. They said, and it seems to be the more correct opinion in the madhab, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, that the, the inzal, the excretion of madhi due to repeatedly looking at a person that gives you arousal does not break the fast, okay? That the excretion of madhi is not, in, is not included in the ruling of breaking the fast in the issue where one is repeatedly looking at that which gives him or her arousal. But if many, if semen comes out, then that does break the fast due to repeatedly looking at that which gives you arousal, but not madhi. Madhi doesn't break the fast if it comes out due to repeatedly looking at that which gives you arousal. Some masail to mention here, a few points to mention here. If the money comes out, the semen comes out without pleasure. It comes out without the feeling of pleasure. Like for example, the relationship a person had with his wife took place in the night, but he didn't excrete semen. However, later on in the day after getting up for Fajr, he excretes uh, the semen and it came out without any desire, without any feeling of arousal or excitement or enjoyment, then in this situation, the person's fast is not going to be broken. So if he ejaculated after Fajr due to a relationship that took place in the night, okay, then his, his uh, fast is still going to be valid because it came out without the feeling of pleasure. Another mas'ala, if a person masturbates, he makes istimna but the money doesn't excrete, then his fast is not broken. However, he's extremely sinful for doing that while fasting, for masturbating, which is something which is haram. If he does that while fasting, he's going to be sinful. But if he didn't excrete money, semen, then the fast is not broken. However, if there is intiqal, if there is movement, he can feel that the money was moving from its original place, from the groin, from the loins, and it was moving through the organ, uh, but it didn't excrete in this situation his fasting is going to be broken and he will also take the ruling of having to make ghusl another mas'ala before we move on kissing is allowed if one feels that they are fully able or one feels that they are able to control themselves from excreting madhi or excreting mani from excreting semen or, uh, or madhi طيب. And the evidence for this is the famous hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha where she said كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ يُبَاشِرُ وَيُقَبِّلُ وَهُوَ أَمْلَكَكُمْ لِأَرْبِهِ وَكَانَ أَمْلَكَكُمْ لِأَرْبِهِ That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to yubashir, used to touch and hug and physically be with his wives 
outside of penetrating them and he used to kiss but he was in the most he was the most able to control his sexual desire okay his sexual organ he was the most able to control his desire so it shows the hadith that if you are able to control your desire then there's something you can do but if you're not able to control your desire then you have to stay away from it because it will lead to you excreting either semen or madhi the author he says the next thing a thermin the eighth thing which breaks the person's fast is aw hajama aw ihtajama wa dhahara dammun aw hajama meaning that he did hijama to other than himself aw ihtajama he had the hijama done to himself wa dhahara dam and blood comes apparent comes out then this will break his fast طيب and the evidence for this in this in the hadith of Abi Dawood and uh, Ahmed where the Prophet وسلم, narrated from Shadad ibn Aws radiallahu anhu that the Prophet وسلم, said after al hajim wal mahjum that the both the one who is doing the hijama and the one who is receiving hijama then both of them they are having their fast being ruled as broken their fast is broken وظهر الدم أي خرج فإنه يفطر الحاج والمحجوم سواء كانت الحجامة في الرأس أو الكتفين أو غير ذلك. So Sheikh Mansour says that the ruling of having broken the fast for the one who is doing the hijama or the one who is receiving the hijama is regardless of where it is, whether it's in the head, whether it's in the shoulders, on the back, any part of the body, as long as some blood is coming out, then the hijama is given the ruling of having broken the fast. Now here. Sheikh Amir Bahjat, Hafidullah Ta'ala and others, they mentioned that the Hanbalis, they don't make Qiyas on this issue. They say that the illa here, the illa, the reason for the ruling is ta'abudi. Ta'abudi means that you accept it as a worship to Allah Azawajal, you are unable to comprehend. It's ghayru ma'qul. It's not able to comprehend the reason of the ruling. So it's ta'abudi, it's tawaqqaf, you just stop and you accept. So therefore, in an issue where the illa is ta'abudi, you cannot make qiyas in that issue. So therefore they say pertaining to donating blood or anything of the like similar to that, blood transfusions, then this doesn't break the person's fast. Okay, it doesn't break the person's fast because qiyas cannot be made in this issue because the illa is ta'abudi. The author he moves on and now he's going to mention that what must be present for the previous rulings to take effect. That these things, if they are not present, then the previous rulings that we mentioned do not take effect. So the author, may Allah have mercy upon him, says, Amidan dhakiran li sawmihi fasada la nasiyan aw mukrahan. That the person, Amidan, it has to be intentional, dhakiran, he has to be aware that he is fasting, uh, then this will break his fast. La nasiyan, not the one who is forgetful, aw mukrahan, or the one who was uh, compelled. So let's take this bit by bit. يشترط للفطر بما سبق من المفطرات ثلاثة ثلاثة شروط. So Sheikh Mansour says that there has to be three conditions in order to see that what was previously mentioned uh, takes place as a ruling. The first of them he says الذكر بألا يكون ناسيا فالناس معذور. So the person has to be aware. He has to be in a state of awareness of what he is doing and uh, remembering that he is fasting for the ruling to take place. So in the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, we have that the Prophet said, مَن نَسِيَ وَهُوَ صَائِمٌ فَأَكَلَ أَوْ شَرِبَ فَلْيُتِمَّ صَوْمَهُ فَإِنَّمَا أَطْعَمَهُ اللَّهُ وَسَقَاهُ That the Prophet said, whoever is fasting, but then he's forgetful and out of forgetfulness, he ate or he drank, then let him continue to fast, for verily it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave him to eat and to drink. Okay, the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. So this clearly shows that if you are in a state of forgetfulness and you do something to break your fast, with one exception which we'll come to later, then this will uh, not be uh, considered as breaking the fast. You're excused. And also we have the hadith uh, collected by Imam Ibn Majah, rahimahullah ta'ala, where, he's, where the Prophet sallallahu said, "Inna Allah ta'ala tajawaz li, tajawaz li an ummati al khata wa nisyan wa mastukrihu alayhi." That verily Allah subhanahu wa taala has overlooked for me on behalf of my ummah. The Prophet sallallahu is saying, "Al khata that which is done by mistake, wa nisyan that which is done forgetfully, wa mastukrihu alayhi, and that which 
uh, the, the uh, Ummah was compelled to do and that which the Ummah was compelled to do. So if it's done by a mistake or if it's done due to forgetfulness or, it's done to, or if it's done due to being compelled then it's overlooked. The second of these matters, these conditions is Al-Ikhtiyar that the person should have done it by his own choice and not have been compelled. If he was compelled, then his fasting is valid. Why? Because of the hadith we just took in Ibn Majah and also because in Surah Al-Nahl, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ كَفْرَ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ إِيمَانِهِ إِلَّا مَنْ أُكْرِهَا وَقَلْبُهُ مُطْمَئِنٌ بِالْإِيمَانِ That the one who falls into kufr after having believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is kufr, right? It makes your actions void, whatever actions you are doing. Except for the one, إِلَّا مَنْ أُكْرِهَا وَقَلْبُهُ مُطْمَئِنٌ بِالْإِيمَانِ Except for the one who was compelled to fall into disbelief, whilst his heart was in a state of iman. So outwardly, he had to do disbelief because he was compelled to do it. He was forced at a gunpoint or something of that nature. Uh, so he had to commit kufr, he had to commit disbelief. However, his heart was in a state of Iman. The Iman still remained in his heart. So this is a clear proof that is if one is compelled that if the ruling of Kufr is removed from the one who is compelled then therefore more so that the one who is compelled to break his fast then that ruling is removed from him also meaning that he's not taken to account and not considered to having broken his fast and the third condition is al-ilm okay al-ilm bi'an yantafi minhu al-jahl anna hadha al-amr muftirun shar'an that the person uh, before the ruling is given to him that you have broken your fast it has to be questioned. Did you actually know? Did you have the knowledge that the thing that you are doing breaks your fast? Okay, so these three matters have to be present before the ruling is enacted uh, that a person has broken his fast due to the eight things that we mentioned before. The author he says, Also, other things which, if they happen to him, they are not considered as having broken the fast. If flies into his mouth, a fly or some type of dust, then this doesn't break the fast. So if something comes into his mouth and he didn't intend for that to come to his mouth, and he's unable to stop that from happening, then this person, the fasting is not broken due to that. So these situations that we mentioned, then the person didn't intend that these things enter into his mouth. Uh, it happened without his control. Then his fasting is not broken. Or a person has an, a thought which aroused him one thought, right? Which aroused him and he was unable to control that. It's not like the previous issue where the person was sitting there and thinking about that which could arouse him or looking at that which could arouse him. Here he thinks a thought passes his mind and he pushes it away. However, that thought caused him to ejaculate or to excrete madhi. Okay, or he has a wet dream. In these situations, the ruling is that he hasn't broken or she hasn't broken the fast. So Sheikh Mansour he says, فَإِذَا, إِذَا فَكَرَ صَائِمُ فَوَقَعَ مِنْهُ إِنْزَالَ بِمُجَرَدَ تَفْكِيرُ أَوْ أَنَّهُ أَنْزَلَ بِإِحْتِلَامٍ فَإِنَّهُ لَا يُفْتَرُ بِذَلِكَ وَالدَّلِيلِ the evidence for this is the hadith in Abu uh, that mentioned by Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu in Bukhari and Muslim inna Allah ta'ala tajawaza li ummati that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has overlooked for my ummah ma haddathat bihi anfusuha that which they speak to themselves about meaning the thoughts that come to your soul and the thought that come to your mind Allah azza wa jal overlooks this for you ma lam yatakallamu as long as they don't speak about these thoughts or act upon these thoughts. So if it's only a thought that came to you and it caused you to ejaculate, okay, or it was a wet dream in your sleep, then this you are not taken to account for. And with regards to the wet dream, um, that the actions of the one who is sleeping are not, he is not taken to account for those. It's not uh, given to him as though he did it. Okay. 
Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Kahf, when نُقَلِّبُهُمْ دَاتَ الْيَمِينِ وَدَاتَ الشِّمَالِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we turn them on their right and we turn them on their left. So Allah azawajal is saying that it wasn't the sleeping person that was doing this action. Rather, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was doing it for the sleeping person. Okay, so when you're asleep, you're not held to account for the actions that you are doing. The author, he says, أو أصبح في فمه طعام فلفظه Or the person wakes up and he finds food in his mouth فلفظه So he gets rid of that food from his mouth, then this doesn't break the fast. And notice that the word lafadha is like lafth. Lafth is a, 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 a letter, right? Because you also bring this out from your mouth. So the Arabic letter lafth uh, is that which you bring out from your mouth. Also here lafadhahu. So if there's food in the person's mouth when he wakes up uh, and he takes this out of his mouth, then this doesn't break the fast. Because of course it didn't, uh, no eating took place. The author he says, أو اغتسل أو تمضمد أو استنثر أو زاد على ثلاث. If the person takes a ghusl or he makes مضمضة or he makes استنثار, so the مضمضة is to to swish the water around in your mouth when making wudu. The استنثار is to bring out the water from your nose. أو زاد على ثلاث or he goes above and beyond three. The reason they mention above and beyond three here, the author, the reason he mentioned it. Is because some ulama said that going above three times of mother mother and istinshaq etc is not legislated therefore if you do something which is not legislated and the water goes in then it breaks your fast however the author is saying no so again if the person makes a ghusl or he makes mother mother or he makes istinthar or zada ala thalath or he goes beyond three times or balagha fadakhal al ma halqahu or he yani or he exaggerates in taking in the water, lam yafsud, then this doesn't break uh, the fast. Uh, so if he takes in the water through his through his mouth, not his nose, then this doesn't break the fast. And the reason for this ruling is because he didn't intend to bring the water into his jawf. So this ruling is going to be similar to the one who a fly enters into his mouth without his intention. The author he says, And whoever eats and whoever eats because he is in doubt about the um, the rising of fajr, the coming of the dawn then his fasting is correct. So doubt is 50-50, right? Shak is 50-50. So whoever eats in this situation, then his fasting is correct. So his fasting is correct and there's no qadla upon him. Why? Because the uh, verse in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَّبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ Eat and drink, حَتَّى يَتَّبَيَّن Eat and drink, and يَتَّبَيَّن here means eat and drink until there is clarity for you that the dawn has now come upon you. Okay? So this person is in a situation where there's not clarity. He's in a situation of shak. He's in a situation of doubt, 50-50. And Sheikh Amr al-Bahjad gives a clear example to make this ruling even clearer. He says, if one hears the Adhan, but he doesn't know, is it the first Adhan or is it the second Adhan? So he goes ahead and takes Suhoor, hoping that it's the first Adhan. So he says to himself, Inshallah, it's the first Adhan. Let me take some Suhoor and everything will be okay. Hear the second Adhan, I'll stop eating and go and pray Fajr. So after eating the Suhoor at the first Adhan, sleep overcomes him. He falls asleep and then he doesn't wake up until after sunrise. So in this situation, the doubt, the shak has stayed with him. And there's no way for him to know, did he eat, did he take his suhoor at the right time or not the right time? Did he take his suhoor uh, at the first adhan or was it the second adhan? Because he fell asleep after eating uh, whilst the adhan was being caught. So in this situation, his fasting is still valid, right? However, if it was known to him that he actually ate after the second adhan, then his fasting would be invalid. Because certainty is that the night was still present. 
and he had doubt had tala al fajr had doubt come about wal yaqin la yazulu bi shak and yaqin certainty is not removed due to doubt so in this situation his fast is still valid but the important thing here is that the shak the doubt remained with him okay if he had found out later that actually he had eaten at the wrong time then his fast would be invalid but in the example i gave you from sheikh amir bahjat hafizahullah ta'ala it showed clearly that the doubt remained with him the author he says illa in akala shaykan fi ghurub shams however if the person eats in a state of doubt he's doubtful whether the sun has set or not then the fast is going to be invalid طيب. so if he eats in doubt whether the sun had set or not then he's going to be uh, his fast is going to be invalid اذا اكل وهو شاك في غروب الشمس هل غربت ام ما زال النهار ولم يتبين له شيء او تبين له بعد ذلك انه اكله كان قبل غروبها فالحكم ان عليه القضاء مع الاثم نعم so as i said in this situation his fast is going to be invalid and he's going to be sinful ولا الا ان الاصل بقاء النهار and the reason the reason is because the reality and the foundation is that the day is still with him as a ruling and this certainty of the day being present is not going to be removed with doubt Sheikh Amil Bahjad gives a clear example for this he said if a person is in Medina and he hears the Adhan on the radio but then he has doubt he's not sure is this the Adhan of Mecca which is about five minutes different to the Adhan of Medina so he says to himself خلاص, I'll take it as being the Adhan of Medina so he eats hoping that it's the Adhan of Medina and he, then he doesn't get a chance later on to find out or no information comes to him whether it was correct or it was incorrect in this situation he has to make up the day because he ate upon doubt of whether or not sun, sunset had come upon him or not اما لو اكل شاكا في غروب الشمس ثم تبين بعد ذلك ان اكله حصل بعد الغروب فصومه صحي مع الاثم however if he had eaten right in the situation of doubt that whether the sun had set or not but later he came to know that actually he was correct he ate after sunset then his fasting would be correct but he would be sinful his fasting would be correct but he would be sinful one more situation before we stop aw mu'taqidan annahu layl fabana nahar or the person is not in doubt he's sure he believes that it's night time that it's the sun has set however it turns out to still be daytime then in situation in this situation his fast is also going to be invalid so he's not doubt it's he's sure in his mind he's sure he's not in doubt uh, but then it turns out later on to be uh, still daytime then his fast is invalid law annahu akala dhanan anna al-fajr lam yatla' fa tabayyana annahu akala ba'da tulu' al-fajr fi an-nahar fa la yu'tad bi hadha as-sawm wa 'alayhi al-qada so the hadith which proves this that if a person eats believing that it fit, that it's um, that it's sunset but then finds out that it's not sun not sunset and he's eaten then the fast is going to be invalid and the proof of this is the hadith of uh, Asma bint Abi Bakr radiyallahu anhuma where she said aftarna ala ahad rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we had broken our fast uh, we made iftar uh, in the time of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi yawmin ghaim in a day when it was cloudy right thumma tala'at ash-shams and after the clouds had passed away okay then the sun again came out so they thought that the it was sun set but they didn't but when the clouds disappeared after a few moments they found that the sun was still there present so they had broken their fast at the wrong time qal rawi the narrator of the hadith said qultu li hisham i said to hisham umiru bil qada were they ordered to make up this day qal fala budda min dhalik so hisham said of course there's uh, it's a necessity that they had to do that so the ruling is clear in the hadith that in the situation when the person believed that sun had set but then found out later that it hadn't then they have to make up the fast and as Sheikh Amil Bahjat mentions the rule in fiqh la ibra bil dhan al bayn khata'ahum there is no uh, consideration to to what you thought when the opposite is proven okay when you are proven to be wrong we we'll stop here inshallah wa sallallahu alaihi wasallam anything which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
shortcomings and mistakes were from myself and shaitan if you have any questions then feel free inshallah